Hello, this is Rob from PracticalPrecision.com. In this video, we look at how to lay out a kinematic mount and optimize the design for stiffness and repeatability using the Maxwell Criterion. You can download a CAD model of a kinematic mount and learn more about designing a custom kinematic mount at PracticalPrecision.com layout. This is a Maxwell-style kinematic mount which uses three balls and three V-grooves to establish six points of contact exactly constraining the top plate relative to the bottom. This equilateral triangle layout is very common, and its symmetry has a number of advantages, including stability and maximization of usable space between the supports. An isosceles triangle layout, like this one, may fit better in certain applications, or it may be preferred if there is greater sensitivity to alignment in one axis than another. Many practical applications have design constraints that make it difficult to use straightforward layouts. This is an extreme example from a stabilized gimbal and payload that I helped to develop. These are patent drawings. The optical axes of the various sensors need to be aligned to each other, a process called bore siding. Kinematic mounting is used for a number of these mounts and adjustments. There are two challenges in designing those kinematic mounts. The first order concern is simply getting all the sensors to fit. Laying out the kinematic mounts is secondary. The second concern is that the final bore sight alignment is actually done with the covers installed. So adjustments and locking mechanisms need to be positioned and oriented so that they are accessible from the outside through small access ports. Given these constraints, simple aesthetically appealing equilateral or isosceles triangle layouts simply won't work. We need to make it fit as best we can while still maintaining high stability and repeatability. Consider two scenarios. The first is intentional assembly. The second is micro disassembly and reassembly, which can occur when the mount is subject to shock, vibration, or differential thermal expansion. Anything really that causes a momentary separation or movement of any of the contact points. Although the kinematic mount theoretically has one unique fully constrained position that it should assume, various effects such as friction, elastic deformation, or contamination can prevent it from achieving or returning to that position after each assembly. Virtually any arrangement of three balls and three grooves will establish six points of contact that fully constrain the kinematic mount. But not all arrangements are equally stable and repeatable. Let's start developing our understanding of this by looking at an extreme example. If a torque is applied or some slight motion is imparted, this arrangement offers virtually no resistance or tendency to return to its original state because the reaction forces are perpendicular to the motion. James Clerk Maxwell, the scientist most associated with the three balls and three V-grooves kinematic mount, proposed a criterion for ensuring stability. I'll include the full criterion and references in the article that accompanies this video. But to paraphrase and simplify, to promote stability, arrange the bearing surfaces such that if one surface is removed, the direction in which the part would then be free to move is as close to perpendicular to that surface as possible. Satisfying the Maxwell criterion is greatly simplified in the case of a plane arrangement of three balls and three Vs. Simple geometry can be used to optimize even an arbitrary layout of three supports, like the one we have here. If we define a triangle with a corner at the center of each ball, then the center line of each V groove should bisect the corresponding angle. These three lines intersect at the centroid of the coupling. Note that this is not the same as the geometric centroid of the triangle in any case, except for an equilateral triangle, so don't take that shortcut. To fully understand the kinematics of the mount and the benefits of the Maxwell criterion, we also need to define instantaneous centers of rotation for each pair of supports. Each ball in V has two force vectors that intersect at the center of the ball, defining a plane. So we have three planes with three intersections defining three axes, which are the instantaneous centers of rotation. Any adjacent pair of ball and V supports has four points of contact, leaving only two degrees of freedom. Let's look at this case of supports one and three. The first degree of freedom is rotation about the axis through the center of the two balls. The points at support two will resist this motion. Of course, a preload mechanism of some kind is required to positively load the ball against the V-groove under all circumstances. The second degree of freedom is rotation about the instantaneous center, which is coming out of the screen towards us in the top view. 
you can see that the reaction forces at those two supports offer virtually no resistance to rotation about the instantaneous center. The force vectors are normal to the circle. Conversely, we see that the reaction forces at the third support are tangent to the arc, so they offer their full resistance. So support 2 resists rotation about IC31, support 3 resists rotation about IC12, and support 1 resists rotation about IC23. So the combination of the grooves in this arrangement, satisfying the Maxwell criterion, offers resistance to motion about all three instantaneous centers. So in designing a kinematic mount, complying with the Maxwell criterion will promote stability and repeatability. In the case of a planar mount, this means ensuring that the V-groove center lines bisect the corresponding apex angles. Visit practicalprecision.com slash layout to learn more about laying out a custom kinematic mount, find additional kinematic design resources, download a kinematic mount CAD model that you can use and freely adapt for your own work, and to sign up for a course in kinematic mount design with me, Rob, at Practical Precision. If you found this video helpful, please like it below. It will help others like you to find it too. And subscribe for more videos on precision machine design and optomechanical engineering.